COVID-19 and the impact on safety. Here we find ourselves one month in to a world pandemic that is affecting our business dramatically in many ways. I want to take a moment to look back over the last month and to understand where we've came from and where we find ourselves at this moment in time. One month ago, we were given high level instructions by our government and Health Protection Scotland and England that we must social distance, we must not work unless it's essential. Those high level instructions had to be worked to fit with our business, which takes place offshore in a remote location in a confined space where two metres social distancing is typically impractical. Before we get to our installation, we have to take a journey on a helicopter where we understand the impracticalities of providing two metre social distancing. So from the onset a month ago, our industry was set some significant challenges, management of change that they had to address. We also had a workforce who all have families, loved ones, and those concerned for them, who had to accept that they would have to go back to work as essential workers. One month on, we have seen many, many additions to the way we travel and the way we work offshore, which have been introduced to add additional barriers while mitigating the potential risk of transmission of this disease to our workspace. We're not done yet, but over the piece of the last month, we have introduced many, many additional systems that have improved or reduced actually the likelihood of us transmitting the disease. Those include temperature, trans temperature checks at the heliport, questionnaires at the heliport. We're now working on potentially introducing nudes that will provide face cover while we travel. Some companies have reduced flight occupancy in order to increase the space where practical. So it's not that the industry is not responding. These things take time to respond. We're also on the platform now practicing, in some cases, single occupancy cabins because we've reduced the manning so much. We're, we're introducing and have introduced two meter spacing in the galleys, in the social areas, and also greater levels of sanitization and cleanliness. Despite all these efforts, we are still having the occasional outbreak or transmission of disease. As I said, we're not done yet. And in a month's time, who knows where we'll be, but we know if we can continue at the pace we've done in the last month, we will be in a far better place for containing the transmission of this virus. It doesn't happen alone. We have as we do in our normal business, to manage the change and control the work. And this requires the involvement of the workforce as much as leadership and management. So as much as the workforce raised concerns and questions, and we've responded to many of these through our earlier videos and question sets, we now must get to that place where we stand, start to identify the practical things that we can do to ensure wherever possible, we social distance and reduce the potential for transmission. Things work and are achieved much quicker when we work together. So my request to the workforce and leadership is start to really over communicate on what's required, what employers are doing to improve the situation what they're doing to add additional barriers to those put in place by the government and Health Protection Scotland and England. Work together, communicate what can be done further. I'm amazed and encouraged by the amount of feedback we've had 
on what's happening on specific installations around the North Sea to prevent the transmission of these diseases. So I ask you, please start to play your part, start working together to identify how practically we can achieve social distancing while keeping our business healthy. Our goal, our combined goal must be to avoid the transmission of COVID-19 across our offshore operation. 